I just like the sound. Branstetter, Brecken Vaught, and Isaiah Smith. What was your chemistry that you guys had going into this 2019-2020 winter season? Uh, you know, I, I knew that we were going to kind of just go back up from what we did last year. We wanted to make the game fast and press and trap and play really uh, quick offensively in our transition offense. So that was some uh, points of focus that we had last year. and We wanted to keep the same pace and same ideas from last year keep the same ideas from last year, just keep the pace, just play fast basketball the way that Crane does and just make every opponent that they played play at their level. And so now as we're joined by, once again, Tyler Campbell, Wes Brandstetter, Isaiah Smith, and Brecken Vaught. So, guys, what was your mentality? What did you guys have in the chemistry lab to propel you guys to 25 wins and three losses this season? Um, I don't know. We've played together our whole lives, and we're just going to do what we did last year, continue what we did. Same question goes to you guys, to you once again, Brecken Vaught, Wes Brandstetter, and Isaiah Smith. What was your chemistry that you guys had going into the season? What did you guys think the chemistry was in this season? Start off with Isaiah Smith. Um, I think that we had a great defense and we played together and we played for the name on our shirt and each other. Just play for each other, playing the, for the name on your shirt, and that's and that just says Crane on that shirt. And that team, once again, pr- propelled to a 25-3 and season on this year, which last year you guys went to a 22-4 and went a 22-4 and season last season. But this 24. season, 24-4 and last season, but now 25-3. and And so what was this – so what was different about this year as opposed to last year? Uh, the difference were we was a faster team. I think we had more chemistry than last year. We just could get up and down the court and play basketball. Get up and down the court, play basketball. And this Crane team, they were very, they were very well known for their speed on the court. And so, did Coach Smith and Coach Steele did did they lecture you guys on keeping the teams at your level? Is Mike make them play at at Crane's level? Uh, they wanted us to. Um, a lot of times, uh, we kind of played down the, the other team's competition. Um, but we always wanted to keep our momentum and uh, keep our tempo. Keep the tempo it is. And now we got to move on to one topic. It's about the wins. What was what was the most important one that you guys had out of the 25 wins that you guys had this season? Uh, I would say the. <laughs> The blue eye game. We went to overtime twice. Same question goes to you, Coach Smith, Ty Campbell, Isaiah Smith, and Wes Brandstetter. What would be the most important one you guys would say in this 2019-2020 winter season? Uh, you know, I think that we played through some adversity sometimes and foul trouble and tough games. And you only grow from playing adversity games. I mean, nobody grows from winning games 20 and 30. So when we had to battle and fight through stuff and kind of see who we are. And when you have an adversity game, I know the boys mentioned the double overtime win in the blue eye. Uh, that just strengthened our team right throughout the season that we had adversity. You only know who you are through adversity. Wes Brandstetter, Isaiah Smith, and Todd Campbell, what would you guys say your most important win of the season would be? Um, I think a mix of game was a good one. And even though we lost, it made us better as a team. And I think it made us – 
work together and know that we what we needed to do to get better. Uh, I think everyone is the same. They're all important. And I'll pass it to Brecken. Uh, I think a lot of our wins were good wins. Uh, a lot of them. Uh, we had to keep our uh, focus, and so we just kept playing who's next. <laughs> and I'll take it to Wes. Like Brecken said, all of our games were important wins. I mean, it got us closer as a team. Our chemistry even got stronger, and it prepared us for district time to get those important wins to keep on letting us move on. Those wins were very important throughout the season. And now we got to talk about what was the definition that you guys had for this season when you guys came in in November. What was Coach Smith's, Smith's definition of this 25-3 season? Um, our team, we needed to uh, play a lot faster than other teams because we weren't that big. So we had to learn how to rebound with our little height and play good defense to get stops. Rebound with, with all your little height. And one thing about this Crane team, almost everybody on the starting five was, except for Woodward, Jacob Woodward was, was both six feet. Ty Campbell and Isaiah Smith coming at five at five foot A along with Wes Brandstetter at five eight and Brecken Bott coming in at five ten. And so that's something that, that is kinda unusual for Crane is everybody on their varsity and starting five was below was was below six feet. But this Crane team, they were once again very fast and very which play or which got every team to play at their level. And so Coach Smith, what would be your definition of this season, along with Ty Campbell, Wes Brandstetter, and Brecken Bott? Uh, you know, I just think we're tough. A lot of people don't understand what toughness is. Toughness is a skill that I think a lot of schools don't amplify that. And we want to be tough kids, and we want to show our toughness about getting gritty with people. And toughness wins games. Uh, you, you've got to learn to be tough. It's a skill that you can work on in practice. So uh, we always believed in our toughness was better than everybody else's. Toughness was better than everybody else. And toughness does win games. It's kind of like, say, like in football, defense wins championships. In basketball, it's toughness that wins games. And so, Ty Campbell, what would you say your definition of the season along with Brecken Bott and Wes Brandstetter? Um, I think we were just faster than everybody else. And we we're a lot more mentally and physically tough than everyone else. Like Ty said, we was mentally tough and more physical than everybody else. I mean, that's what we had to do to get most of our wins when it came down to them close games was being mentally prepared and just playing through every call or every play that we possibly could. Play through every call that you just possibly could. We move on to Brecken Vaught. So what would be your definition, Brecken, of this season? Uh, I think we played like a family of – we didn't look at each other as a team or, like, friends. I I think we looked at each other as a family, and we, like, played towards, like, not wanting to disappoint each other. And so I think that really pushed us to be as – what it pushed us to, like, work as hard as we did. Just coming as a family, that just pushed you guys what you guys could do, just be a family, just play like play like brothers on the court. Now we got to move back to the wins. So we mo- we've already talked about the important wins. So what was the most – exciting win. What was the one that you guys just want to relive again of this season? What was the most exciting win you guys had of this season? I bet we all agree that it was Blue Eye, the double overtime win. Yeah. I agree with what I said. Yep, yeah, boys Blue Eye game. Boys Blue Eye game in the district semifinal. That was a pretty pretty good game to see on paper. Going to two overtimes at CFO, as you guys were pretty much down pretty much the entire game. I don't know if you guys led before before halftime or before overtime and maybe before halftime but that crane team they were down and they just just won't go away that just that just pretty much says what Crane's like you just they're just a team that just will not go away it's it's kind of like how the let's say the washington nationals from this fall they had the motto which is known as finish the fight which took them all the way to the world series and so did you guys kind of learn off of what the nationals did this season is finish the fight yeah i think I mean, yeah, I've learned from it. I don't know about anybody else, though. Yeah, I learned from it. I watched them play a lot, and they play hard. I'm not really a big baseball fan, so I didn't really 
understand know that. Yeah, I've heard great things about them, and that's a uh, compliment. And now, Coach Smith, could you say that when about comparing your team to the Washington Nationals, where they went on to win the World Series, and they had this motto known as "Finish the fight." Did you ever lecture your players this season and says, "Let's finish the fight. Whenever what what fight we get in, let's finish it." You know, we always win every game by being a little tougher and grittier than everybody else, and I think we'll still be like that next year. And you can't mimic that. I mean, people say they want to be tough and gritty, and our motto is we're just meaner and tougher than everybody else on the offensive and the defensive end, and we just don't take anything off too many people about how we play. So we always want to force the issue if possible. Now we got to move on to the dark side from wins, and that's going to be the losses. Only three losses for this for this basketball club for the Pirates this year which came to, once again, Nixa, Bolivar, and Greenwood. So what would you guys say you're the one that you guys learned from? What was the loss that you guys learned from this year in in the 2019-2018 winter season? Let's start off with Coach Smith. Well, uh, the bo- yeah, the boys had to go to class. The bell rang, so they're in class now. But um, I would say the biggest loss that really helped us was the Nixa loss, about finishing out tough wins, and we had Nixa beat. And I think that was probably the biggest one was Nixa. Biggest one was Nixa and then in the blue and gold tournament. And now we got to move on to another one. That was the most disappointing loss. What was the most disappointing loss that you guys had from this season? If you were to take away from the Nixa game, the Bolivar game, both in the blue and gold and in the Greenwood game in the district. I think the most uh, disappointing loss was the Nixa game in itself. Uh, we had it. We couldn't finish it off. You know, very frustrated. Uh, we didn't play near as well in the Bolivar game. And I think also in the, uh, Greenwood game, we played as well as we could, and I thought we did exactly what we wanted to do and to give our chances to win, and it just didn't happen. It didn't happen, but you guys just played your hearts out in that in that dish, into the quarterfinals. I'm not sure if they're going to be playing Harville at Republic, but if you're going to stick out that game, who do you, how close do you think that game is going to be? Do you think it will be closer than your district championship against against Greenwood, or do you think it's going to be just like a simple Greenwood game where it's, where it's just a blowout? I think it will be a good game. I really do. I think Hartville and them will be a good matchup, good game. Uh, we'll just see uh, how Aminu plays. Everything goes by how he good he is. Uh, so that'll be the big deciding factor. We the big deciding factor now. As we now move on out of the 2019-2020 winter season now to the 2020-2021 winter season that will that will tip off in November. As from what I hear is we could be opening opening the season on the road or maybe at home but i'm not sure but what's going to be the definition when you guys go into next season what will be the main subject that will be taught for next season uh you know we'll have some pieces to uh to uh overcome and i think we'll find those kids and the kids will be ready for that so i think uh uh we'll be different than what we were but i still think we'll have a good solid team so i look forward to Getting them in the off season, and see what we develop. See what you guys develop, and now, and now as four seniors you're losing this year: Tyler Campbell, Wes Brandstetter, Jacob Woodward, and Lucas Bentley. Which they we don't know if, if any of them are going to college or not, but we do know that Tyler Campbell is probably pursu- pursuing college. We don't know about Wes Brandstetter or Jacob Woodward, and don't know about Lucas Bentley. But have any of our player of your players signed their letters of intent to go attend college? I uh, know, I know that there's a little bit of interest with uh, Tyler, so we'll kind of see where that kind of goes with his uh, further in his career. So uh, that was uh, where I keep kind of think we are right now as a team, but just kind of see where Tyler ends up. Just see where Tyler ends up, and now you guys will have another set of seniors as your starting five will be a little bit different next year. So how do you think your starting five is going to be next year on the varsity side? Uh, a lot of spots up for grabs. Uh, we only have two returners, Isaiah Smith and Brecken Vaught. Uh, those are two good returners to have. So we got some spots to fill that the kids will jump into. There'll be some good competition. I've uh, got a lot of returners, you know, guys that are lettermen. I'm interested in who puts the work in uh, in the off season and wants to go ahead and just grab those spots. Just go ahead and grab those spots. And so it's going to be a big hole to fill. So who's going to be the starting point guard? Because Tyler Campbell will be departing the Crane the crane program and another thing is about for classes five four three two and one how far do you think 
each team will go. Do you think, or which teams do you think will make it to state in class one, two, three, four, and five? You know, it's hard to say. Uh, I don't know. I think Door is pretty good. Uh, and I hear uh, also Golden City is pretty good. I think in those realms, I think that Thayer has a good shot getting far, and so does Skyline. And whoever wins that Green uh, Greenwood Door uh, Greenwood Hartwell game will be a pretty good chance. Now, when we get farther up, I'm not don't know the uh, the teams as well. You know, uh, I know Ava's still in, and so is Fairgrove. So unsure about who they're playing and competing against, and I know Class 4 and Class 5 are still in district play. Class 4 and Class 5 are still in district play. They have longer schedules than Classes 1 through 3, which they are now in the section, or now pretty much in the quarterfinals. We don't know if Class 3 is playing sectionals tonight, but but who do you think is, or who do you think will be playing on the sectional side in Class 3 down here in, in Southwest Missouri? Well, it's quarterfinals now. They all played last night. Uh, I think Ava plays. Um, off the top of my head, I, I lost track of who it is. I know that Fair Grove plays Blair Oaks, who's number one in the state. So uh, I'm not sure who Ava has. So uh, they play quarterfinals on Saturday. Play quarterfinals on Saturday, and also Greenwood plays their quarterfinals in Class Two at Republic. And so that should be a fun game to see on Saturday. Is at Republic between <laughs> Greenwood and Hartville. Also, another thing is, who are going to be some new players that will be coming in next year for this 2020-2021 season? Uh, you know, uh, I think we have a lot of young kids that have opportunities to step in and fill some roles. I look forward to that. You know, I think uh, um, Xander Main played some varsity, and I think he could step in and do some stuff. And I think Taylor Calzaretta, uh, Seth Steele come off the bench, and Aiden Bach come off the bench for us. Uh, there's a lot of pieces that I like. Tanner Graham is another one, and... Um, also, I like Nolan Brawley, so there's going to be some good competition to see who can fit in those spots and roles on varsity. That'll be one thing to fill in is, is the roles on varsity. And now, do you think that this next year's Crane Pirates team, do you think it'll be as good as this year, or do you think they might kind of fall off just a little bit? Hard to say. You know, it's still too early, and who develops? I mean, we're still eight months away and see develops in those eight months. I look forward to seeing that. So it's really hard to say. I think we'll be different. I think we'll be very competitive because Crane kids are competitive. And uh, I really look forward to seeing who spends the time in the offseason wanting those spots. Kind of hard to see because every, every spot is up for grabs coming in the next season. And so as we're about to let you go, if there are any final words you had to say to – all the coaches that you played, all 28 coaches that you played, including Coach Darren Taylor from Greenwood that you guys lost to. What would be your words to Coach Taylor of the Greenwood Blue Jays that you played in the Class 2 District 11 championship on last Saturday? Uh, I just wish them all luck, and if their seasons are already over, I just hope they have a good off season. and the ones that are still playing, just keep rolling. Just keep rolling, and that will end. of the Crane Pirates, Coach Kevin Smith, after that huge 67 to 50, 69 to 57 win over Clever today. Coach Smith, what was your mentality? What would you guys have going into tonight's game against Clever? Yeah, well, I was really worried about the game from the very beginning because we just played them about 10 days ago. So I was very concerned about that. Uh, we beat them in the championship for our own tournament, so I was really concerned the whole way through what we would do. So uh, Clever came out and played a great game. I thought we answered the challenge a few different times, and we ended up winning. So. Uh, it was a good, hard struggle, and we needed that struggle because we haven't had very many along the way. So I was, I was pleased how we performed. Clever, clever improved since we last see, saw them in the tournament. So, what would so what did you have to tell your boys to to take the lead back and just keep the lead throughout the entire game? Because we had a couple lead changes in this game. Yeah, I know we had those uh, lead changes early, but uh, I thought as we kept going, I thought we had a good shot to win just because how we run people in and out, do some things. So. Uh, I thought that was a good positive thing for us. Uh, uh, I know our guard play is pretty strong. We will turn the ball over late and we'll make some free throws. So that was always a pretty good thing for us. Good thing for it, uh, it is for us. Ty Campbell, Isaiah Smith, Breckenbach, 
pretty much that Crane Big Three and also some other players in Aiden Vaught, Jacob Woodward, and West Branstetter, they can also contribute tonight. So what would, you, what would your words for be to your Big Crane Three? Uh, you know, I thought everybody played really well. I didn't, we didn't have anybody just overwhelmed the scoring. We had a lot of ton of guys in the 7, 8, 10, 12. And that's very good for us. Uh, so, that means you've got to guard a lot of different guys. So, I was real pleased. Uh, you know, usually it will go as well as our guards play. So, I was, I was pleased with that aspect. So, um, I thought we played a good overall game. And, and, and our guards did a good job. And our posts did a good job. Post did do a good job, and now it's going to be on to Blue Eye. You guys will welcome Blue Eye tomorrow or on Friday night. That will be your homecoming. So, what's it going to be if you want to get win number 18 on the year against Blue Eye? Oh, it'll be tough. Blue Eye's playing well, and they're big. And uh, I know that they haven't lost since the middle of December. So, uh, they're, they're well coached. They've got a good squad. So, we're going to have to really uh, do some good positive things the next two days of practice to get ready for it. It's Eric Hall, what you have to say to Coach Blue Brocious of the Clever Blue Jays. What would be your words to Coach Brocious of the Blue Jays after that 69-57 to 57 loss they had to you guys? You know, uh, Luke's a good friend of mine. I think he'll do a good job. But I look forward to seeing how they do in the rest of the year for their playoffs and their season. So uh, they're going to have a good year. Appreciate the time, Coach Smith. Congratulations on that big win against Clever. Let's go get Blue Eye on Friday night. All right, thank you. Joined by head coach Kevin Smith of the Crane Pirates after that 69-57 win over Billings tonight. Coach Smith, what was the secret? What was what was the Crane special that you guys had against Billings tonight? You know, we won it from the very beginning. We're always about defense, putting pressure on the ball, and how we guard. And I thought uh, that's usually what we do. And hopefully, it's a good remedy for a win. And we end and begin things always on the defensive end. And, and I think that uh, we're a good, solid team that tries to do that. And you know, that's what we want to do tonight, and I thought that what gave us a good edge in the win tonight. Good win tonight it was, and defense does win games tonight for these Crane Pirates. And that defense was big tonight for, for Crane. A lot of defensive stops, and also offensively was also hot tonight. So what was so what was the pressure? What did you tell your defense and offense tonight when you guys took billing, took on Billings? You know, uh, we wanted to guard and keep the ball in front of us, and we wanted to get pressure on the ball so they couldn't feed the post as well. And that was a struggle, and we wanted to get that done. Uh, and, and off and on, we did a good job with that. Uh, but I, I think that get our ball pressure is uh, some of the better uh, ones that's around, hopefully. Uh, we take pride in it, and we want to try to limit their touches around the post. The big crane three was the key factors. 18, 16, and 14 points coming from Breckenbot, Tyler Campbell, and Isaiah Smith. So what was their chemistry that they had going into tonight's game when they took the court? You know, uh, those boys that know how to play together, they're excellent about playing together. They do a great job. And I can never complain about their savviness and their aggressiveness. And the Ozone guy talked to me about how savvy they are and their aggressiveness. So I can never complain about how they do that. And they're, they're great players. and I sure do enjoy them every game I get them. One big shot that happened at the waning seconds of the third quarter from the hands of Isaiah Smith, he shot a, looks like he was either about a three-quarter court shot or maybe it was a full court shot at the buzzer. So what was he looking for? Did you think he practiced full <laughs> court shots before the game tonight? Well, Adam, you know all kids practice uh, those uh, shots like that. But, uh, you know, uh, desperation, but he had a good look, and he just took the, the big steps to it, made the shots, so and we'll take it and we'll run with it. I thought it was uh, really elevated our crowd, too. It did it, though, elevate the crowd tonight. And that's going to be on to Spokane. You're going to go up to Christian County. So what's it going to be when you take on Spokane Friday night? Uh, you know, Spokane's good, talented. Uh, we're going to be at their homecoming. Hopefully we'll be focused with them. But it'll be a tough game. Hopefully we can keep winning uh, and being at the top of the conference. That's our focus right now. Then we'll focus on the district. Terry Farwell, what would you have to say to Coach Kendall Tilly of the Billings Wildcats after that 69-57 to 57 loss they had. What uh, would your words be to Coach Tilly of the Billings Wildcats? You know, they're a great team. Uh, Kendall does a great job, and I think they're still going to finish up strong the rest of the year, so I wish them well. Appreciate the time, Coach Smith. Congratulations on that win against Billings. Let's go get Spokane. Let's spoil Spokane's homecoming on Friday by night. Three right. Crane Pirates tonight in and, and Tyler Campbell, Brecken Bott, and Isaiah Smith after that 69-57 to 57 win over Billings tonight. Boys, what was the ingredients that you had going into the pot tonight against Billings? Uh, we had just come in and play our defense. Uh, move, when we're on offense, move the ball, so we can get, just get the defense moving. Uh, we had to uh, play good, move the ball, play together, and uh, have good defense. Yeah, just do what we always do. We play hard. 
do what Crane always does, play harder. And that defense was the was a factor. Also, the offense was also the factor. So what did Coach Smith tell you guys before the game tonight against Billings? Uh, we knew they were going to be a good team, good game. So we had to make sure we limited their, their run and make sure we uh, stay composed. Stay under control the whole game and not let their runs get to our head. So let them get to your head. And now you guys scored individually 18, 16, and 14 points. Going down by two. So is that what the big crane three does? Uh, something like that, yeah. Uh, we just played well tonight. Next night's going to be someone else on the team. Yeah, I wouldn't say we really have a big three. I say anybody, it's anybody's night to, go, to score and have a good game. Isaiah Smith, you hit a full court, a full court shot at the end of the third quarter, and so, what were you, what were you, working on when you got the ball, like right at the, right about three seconds left in the fourth, or pardon me, in the third quarter. Uh, make sure I got the shot up before the buzzer went off, because if if it was after the buzzer, then it wouldn't have counted. So I was making sure I got the shot off. You did get the shot off, and now it's going to be on to Spokane Friday night, homecoming night in Spokane. So what's it going to be if you want to crash homecoming in Spokane? I'm going to come out, play hard, uh, control the tempo, and control the game. Uh, play our game, play good defense, and uh, play past that atmosphere that they're going to have. we got to come out, be our great toughness, play our defense. Is there any final word you have to say to Coach Kendall Tilly of the – of the Billings Wildcats, what would be your words to Coach Tilly of the Billings Wildcats after that 69 to 57 loss? Um, they came ready to play. They have a good team and good luck this season. They're really athletic and they got some skilled players and they work hard. Good fight, good game. Good luck, best season. Look, best season. And thank you guys for taking the time with us tonight. Congratulations on those big wins. Also, Isaiah, congratulations on that. Full court shot tonight. Let's go spoil homecoming in Spokane on Friday night. That will end today's show for today. We hope you enjoyed our show. We hope you enjoyed us sitting down with four players from the Crane Pirates. That was Tyler Campbell, Isaiah Smith, Brecken Vaught, and Wes Branstetter, along with Coach Kevin Smith. If you'd like to stay connected with the Crane Pirates through their social media, be sure to like us on Facebook. Also follow them on Twitter. Also follow them on Instagram. Their Twitter is at Crane Hoops, and also their fast their Instagram is at Crane. HSB Ball, Crane HSB Ball on Instagram. If you if you like to stay connected with Ozark Sports Report through our social media, be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Instagram, and check out our website. Our website is Ozark Sports Report. Website.com slash Ozark Sports Report. Also check out our check out our Podbean. It will be on our description page. And for one final time, we like to say congr say congratulations to Coach Kevin Smith on a tremendous season going. Going 25 and 3 on the year for one final time. I'm Adam Smith saying, Have a good day, everybody.